What's that? Nothing to worry about. It's true. Your blood. You are heroes. Heroes? You mean like in the old stories? Lucian Fairfax is the main antagonist of Fable 2. He was the mayor of Bowstone during the Age of Enlightenment and chief architect of the rebuilt Tattered Spire. According to books found in Fable 2, Lucian was a member of the wealthy and much beloved Fairfax family, but with a long history of mental instability. Lucian's grandmother, Lady Ingrid Fairfax was supposedly insane and kept in the attic by her family. Fairfax family denied this of course, saying she died giving birth to Lucian's father. Lucian then witnessed the death of his sister Ellie at a very young age and this left him with a sense of powerlessness. The story of Fable 2 starts out with the recent death of Lucian's wife, Lady Helena Fairfax and his daughter Amelia Fairfax from an unknown illness which drove Lucian into a deep depression. After a while he began researching an old kingdom artifact of great power known as the Tattered Spire which was built by the Archon as a focal point for all will in Albion which would then grant the user any wish he or she wanted. After the Archon's initial use of the Spire though, it and the old kingdom were ultimately destroyed. Still deep in his depression, Lucian saw this as a way to regain his beloved family and set out to do whatever was necessary to rebuild the spire and make his wish. As time went on however, Lucian's mental state continued to deteriorate and he began to see Albion as a flawed land. In his warped state of mind he saw any world that would take his family away from him not worthy of continued existence. These thoughts eventually caused his plans to switch from resurrecting his family to becoming a god and remaking the world into a perfect one where no one would ever die. With the help of Garth, a powerful will user and Old Kingdom scholar who was unaware of Lucian's madness, he learnt more of Old Kingdom engineering. He, Garth and Lucian's men searched the seas around Albion, eventually finding the destroyed foundations of the spire. Committed to rebuilding it, he enlisted hundreds of men to ensure it would be completed within his lifetime. As his madness grew, however, he pushed the builders to great lengths and put down uprisings with ruthless force. Finding it too expensive to pay builders and guards, he has innocent villagers kidnapped and used as slaves, with the guards enlisted to ensure obedience. In his madness, Lucian legitimately believed he was working for the greater good, but with every soldier killed and every slave that fell off the spire, he became more and more numb to the well-being of the very people he was trying to save. As the spire grew, Lucian used his energy to become a powerful will user, gifted with the power of foresight, showing him visions of a hooded blind woman possibly Teresa, and two figures standing behind her. At the time, he did not understand the visions. He also began searching for better sources for guard recruitment while experimenting with ways of ensuring obedience in the guards as well. With Garth's help, Lucian also discovered that in order to use the Spire's power, he needed three people who were the embodiment of the hero disciplines of old, strength, skill, and will. He soon discovered that some of the heroes he was searching for might just be right under his very nose in Bowerstone. Two young street dwelling children, Rose and a younger sibling Sparrow had the blood of a powerful hero in their veins and as a result managed to use an old kingdom artifact. When Lucian learnt of this he sent guards to collect them and bring them to him. When they arrived Lucian instructed them to stand within a circle with an ornate pattern on it. This is the same pattern seen on the seal given to you by Teresa on the back of the fate cards and on the guild seals in the original fable. 
Whether Lucian learnt of this symbol from Teresa or co-opted a relic of the destroyed Heroes Guild for his own purposes is unknown. When the children stepped onto the seal, it began glowing in a bright blue light, but soon turned red. Lucian saw this and was immediately worried. He looked through his books and notes and saw that the children weren't one of the three heroes. One of them was the fourth hero, the hero who had the combined powers of strength, skill and will, and the hero destined to stop him. In a panic, Lucian shot Rose, who collapsed and perished on the floor. He then turned the gun on Little Sparrow and fired. The shot propelled Sparrow out the window and onto the streets below. Believing his biggest obstacle to be out of the way, Lucian left Castle Fairfax for good and sailed to the Spire, where he would remain for the next 20 years. In the next 10 years, Lucian's plans went forward without any resistance. Whilst in Bowerstone, his crimes were brought to light and he was sub subsequently considered a tyrant. He used his powers over the will to create collars that would act to deter his spire guards against defiance and set up an effective recruitment centre in Westcliff for crucible contenders who were perfect minions due to their physical strength, mental weakness and lack of ambition. He also embarked on his most abhorrent of experiments to unnaturally empower his followers with will by implanting tiny shards from the spire itself into their bodies. During this time, unbeknownst to Garth, Lucian had discovered that Garth was the hero of Will, one of the persons he needed to activate the spire's power. At the same time, Garth became aware of Lucian's diminished mental state and what he had planned to do with the spire. He escaped from him and went into hiding. Although upset at this news, Lucian at least knew who the hero of Will was and intended to find him eventually, but he went with his search of the other two heroes. His experiments of will empowerment became more effective and produced the Commandant, who was one of Lucian's most powerful and loyal subjects, and was given command of a shard, a floating piece of the spire, used as a troop transport and weapons platform. Eventually he found a hero of strength and attempted to have his men arrest her, only for his men to fail, mostly due to a lack of planning, some arrogance, and a lot of foolishness on their behalf. His commandant finally captured Garth and he was held prisoner in a spire, but the hero, who Lucian thought he had previously done away with, was alive and well and infiltrated the spire, intent on rescuing Garth. The hero was given a job as a spire guard and spent 10 years trying to rescue Garth, which eventually what the hero was able to do. As they did so, they killed the commandant. Lucian was obviously very angry at this development, but he actually bided his time, knowing that eventually the hero was working towards the same goal as he was, which was trying to gather the other heroes. When the pirate Reaver contacted Lucian and claimed that the hero of Bowerstone had come to meet him, Lucian correctly guessed Reaver was therefore the hero of skill, and sent vast armies to Bloodstone via an armada of great shards to capture him as well as kill the hero. The two managed to escape, so Lucian waited until the moment they were all together atop the hill in Bower Lake. Once the four were gathered, he ambushed them. Suspiciously, Teresa disappears moments before Lucian attacks, and Lucian does not seem preoccupied with her absence. His men take the other heroes to the spire, and if the hero has a family, he admits to personally murdering them. He then aims his pistol at the hero and fires, but the hero's dog leaps in front of the hero, taking the shot for them and dying in the process. Then yet again, Lucian turns the gun on the hero intent on finishing what he failed to do so many years ago. Before he fired the second time, he appeared a bit more sympathetic, telling the hero how hard it was to shoot them and their sister so long ago, saying, you're only a child, but then so was I. And with that, shot and seemingly killed the hero. Lucian then returned to the spire to make his way. But he was in for a rather unwelcome surprise, however, during the ritual of channeling the hero's powers of strength, skill and will into the spire, the fourth hero showed up yet again, and with the power of another Old Kingdom artifact, that music box that the hero had purchased with Rose as a child, managed to stop the ritual. Lucian tried to reason with the hero, trying to convince them that he, need, he wanted the best for Albion, but before he could engage the hero in some sort of battle, he was shot off the platform and fell to his doom either by the hero or by Reaver, depending on how long you wait to listen to all of what he has to say. 
It can also be finished with a weapon of your choice, such as a hammer or a sword, or even a spell. Then if you wait too long, then of course Reaper does shoot him instead, denying the hero your revenge that you'd been fighting for your entire life. He Reaver then mockingly asks, oh I'm sorry, did you want to kill him? In Fable the Journey, Teresa admits how she used Lucian's grief to motivate him to reconstruct the Spire. Lucian's obsession caused him to no longer feel remorse for individuals, and in turn, many innocent slaves of the Spire died for the disobedience. Teresa shares that she shed tears when she realised how much death took place for the cost of her. Alright, a bit of trivia to finish off. Lucian is voiced by the actor Oliver Cotton. The character of Lucian and the Fairfax dynasty could have been inspired by the fictional Edward Fairfax Rochester and the Fairfax family from Charlotte Bronte's classic novel, Jane Eyre. The Fairfax name, Lucian's brooding nature and the story of Lady Ingrid Fairfax, Lucian's grandmother and her madness and confinement in the attic all pay homage to the homage, 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 I think homage, whatever you guys go with, that word's a funny one. You can buy and loot books in Fable 2 that give some insight and history into Lucian's character. He's one of the few characters that ages visibly as the game progresses. The hero of Bowerstone, Hammer and Garth also do. If the hero has a family before going to perform the ritual, Lucian would have caused a sort of parallel between the two by killing the hero's family saying, at last, the last of the heroic blood will be spilt upon this hilltop, just as it now stains the walls of your family home. I would have sent one of my men to do the job, but experience has taught me to see to such things personally. Lucian witnessed the death of his sister at a young age, as did the hero, no matter what choice the hero makes, because of Lucian. Also, Lucian's wife and daughter suffered an untimely death, as does the hero's. Lucian created a connection between himself and the hero without even knowing it. During the first time you see Lucian, his aim is much steadier than it is when he shoots you the second time. Makes sense. Oddly, even though the pistol Lucian uses to shoot the hero of Power Stone with appears to be a flintlock pistol, he fires it twice without reloading. For example, during childhood, Lucian shoots both Rose first with his pistol, aims at the hero, and fires once again without reloading. The same happens during the ritual, in which Lucian shoots the hero's dog, then shoots the hero once again without reloading and it's the same pistol that he uses during uh, the childhood shooting scene. If you hold down the left trigger, you can zoom out during the scene where Lucian shoots you. If you do after the shot is fired, your character just stands there until the cutscene ends, the bullet doing nothing apparently. Many fans were disappointed with this battle as Lucian is killed in one shot despite the large build up he was given. This is believed to be representative of the fact that without the power of the spire to control the hero, Lucian is simply just an old man. The ending is referenced in Fable 3 during the quest of the game, wherein you kill the final boss of Hollows and Hobbs with a single blow while the game masters complain about how anticlimactic and pitiful such an ending is. And that's all we've got lore-wise on Lucian. Just finish off with a bit of personal opinion. A uh, really cool follow-up main antagonist. It was really hard to follow like a jack of blades, however, Lucian's got just enough sort of grey area in between, like he's not pure black and white doing what he thinks was the right thing and for understandable reasons, despite the terrible consequences. And so this is what makes a really good and really iconic villain. It's just a shame that Fable 2 didn't do so well amongst fans and critics due to the overhyping and overpromising, but, but actually it was a pretty good game and Lucian was a fantastic character. I implore you to really think about how good he was. And if you haven't played the game for a while, I really encourage you to do so. I hadn't until recently. And I wanted to make this video now because I actually really appreciated Lucian's character. And finally, we're gonna do Fable videos every Thursday. I missed last week due to my 10 year old Mac dying. I have resurrected it from the dead, like Lady Grey in Fable 2 and it is working again for now. So uh, with that being said, as much as, as much as it lasts and allows me to eventually upgrade, I will do Fable videos every Thursday. I will aim to do another lore video of another game series 
randomly every Monday. So videos on Mondays and Thursdays from now on, guys. I hope that works for everyone. And I thank you for listening. I thank you for your continued subscribing and interacting. I love you guys and see you in the next video. Brock from Brock and Sindri. See you later. Do you consider that a victory? You're merely delaying the inevitable. All that you've struggled for will be crushed under the majesty of the Spire. Why? Why must you interfere? What are you fighting to protect? The world that robs us of what we love most? Is that what you think is worth preserving? You small-minded fool. Do you think you're the only one ever to suffer loss? I asked the world for nothing but a family, and even that trivial request was too excessive. Such a cold world does not deserve its own existence. The new kingdom will have no place for fate or chaos, or hit- Oh, I thought it'd never shut up. Oh, I'm sorry, did you want to kill him? Lucian's dead. So, what happens now?